light. It moves us, our goods, and honestly, kind of everything. How it moves has also changed from one propulsion system to the next. So is what we're used to enough? Or are we about to see a new type of propelled flight? One that's electric. Propulsion really drives the design of aircraft. I think we're seeing the third wave of propulsion, which is going to bring on the third wave of different types of aircraft. It's a really exciting time. Dr. Pat Anderson is the director of the Eagle Flight Research Center at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. The first airplanes were driven by piston engines, and so those were sort of straight wing, slower aircraft. And then in World War II, we saw the advent of the jet engine. It's the world's first warplane with jet propulsion. The look of airplanes changed significantly as we went from piston-driven airplanes to jet airplanes. We saw very sleek airplanes that went very quickly. It will do the job of several of the biggest propeller-driven planes. And now we're looking at the third wave. I don't think you're going to see a lot of retrofits of electrical propulsion into older aircraft. What I think you're going to see is an entirely new generation and look of airplanes. No matter the look, in order to fly, you need energy. That could come from batteries one day. But today, it comes from jet fuel, and there's a reason why. Jet fuel is nearly the perfect package to hold energy. If you look at the specific energy of liquid fuels, it's 7.3 horsepower hours per pound. And right now, the pack level of battery is about 0.1 horsepower hours per pound. That's off by 73 times. It's not 73%, it's 73 times. So that's quite a gap. But liquid-fueled aircraft, only about 30% gets translated to thrust. In a battery electric airplane, that's nearly 80% efficiency. So when you take that into effect, that 73 times gets knocked down to only about 20 times, which is still quite challenging. The good news is that batteries are getting better with time and liquid fuels aren't. Leaving us with? Right now, we have a rising carbon footprint from aviation. Tarek Weeks is the chief engineer at Elroy Air, where they're developing autonomous cargo aircraft. People have greater economic means who are able to use more carbon. Meaning, more people checking in. Only around 20% of the world's population has ventured into the skies. But that's going to nearly double by 2035. The key thing here is that we need to, over time, reduce the footprint of these systems, and we need to get to a point where we're not seeing this upward trend we're emitting. Getting rid of planes isn't an option, so we need to change them. Batteries are really interesting because they hold the promise of being very environmentally friendly, but they're quite heavy. So that provides a challenge, especially in aviation, which is very weight-centric. That challenge? If an airplane needs more power, you need to add more batteries. But batteries make the plane heavier, so you need more energy. Therefore, you add more batteries, which adds more... Oh, okay. We can move on. We need to drive the weight of those batteries down, and so the research in aerospace is focused on that particular metric. To start, aviation could follow the playbook of a different kind of vehicle. What we're moving towards and what companies like Elroy Air are working on is making hybrid power plants, so your Prius per se. This hybrid approach could start small, focusing on flights less than 500 miles, a range making up half of the world's commercial routes. We have a long way to go to get a pure battery electric plane across distances such as the Atlantic. But for things such as regional travel, what I think we're going to see is hybrid electric bridge that gap before we make these giant leaps and bounds. It's no giant leap, but still a significant step that allows engineers the opportunity to test batteries in an aircraft. Hybrid electric system use that battery power to get off the ground, so we're able to get a more fuel-efficient system. And when you cruise more efficiently, you burn less carbon. A Prius, a Chevy Volt, any hybrid car, that's exactly what they do. 
They use that battery to get up to speed, and then by making all the components more optimal, they're able to drastically reduce the amount of fuel you burn, and that's effectively what we're trying to do in an aviation sense. Electric flight gives us hope for greener skies, but it could also bring the arrival of an entirely new type of flying machine. It's an automobile on its way to a hangar to become an airplane. No, not quite. With the current economics, a flying car from a personal standpoint probably isn't viable. But if you take that aircraft, you spread it out over many uses each day, like a taxi, there are a lot of people that speculate we can bring the cost of this down to the higher end Uber type models. With autonomous aircraft that don't require a runway, companies like Uber see these futuristic commutes as a possibility. But if you're wondering how this is different from this, we might have an answer for you. You could just imagine a city if we had 10,000 helicopters operating around. That would be annoying. Noise is one of the critical aspects of being able to deploy urban air mobility and air taxis. And that lends itself to high torque, low RPM electric motors, aircraft that are really, really quiet. <laughs> Transporting people safely is the goal, but using these new technologies to deliver supplies could be just as vital. There's a potential humanitarian aspect of this. You're seeing more and more of these instances where you have infrastructure failures or there is need for rapid distribution. Eliminating the need for a runway and operating autonomously would give these aircraft the ability to connect to isolated areas providing much needed supplies, such as water or medicine, to those in need. What everyone wants to know is when will I be able to book a ticket on an electric aircraft? I'm excited to see this happen sooner rather than later. I think what I see in the future is a mix of traditional aircraft and these newer types of aircraft. That's where the industry needs to go, and I want to give a stepping stone for the future as well.